Hello, everybody. Welcome to Virtual Planetarium Exploring Space. We are not coming to you live this week because the Museum of Science is closed today, but we did not want you to miss out on your weekly uh, dose of space. So we're coming to you pre-recorded. Uh, we'll be back live next week, but we didn't want you to miss out this week. So uh, welcome again. Uh, my name is Talia. I use she, her pronouns, and I am going to be your uh, presenter today. Uh, but of course, I can't do this by myself. Hey, everybody. My name is Katie. My pronouns are she and her, and today I will be providing the visuals. And today it is uh, September. It's the first day of September. Um, we are going to be, we're starting a new month. So the topic for this month is missions that we are really excited about and looking forward to. And we are going to start today with a couple of missions that are gonna be launching in the next couple of months. And they're all going to visit asteroids, but they're going to visit them for very different reasons. So to start off, we're gonna be talking about Lucy which is probably the most ambitious of these upcoming asteroid missions. Uh, you know, most missions only visit one place. Maybe they might visit two. Lucy is going to visit eight different asteroids throughout its 12 year mission. Uh, that is one asteroid in the main belt and then seven of Jupiter's Trojan asteroids. So let's talk for a second about what a Trojan asteroid is. Um, they are asteroids that sort of thanks to the way the gravity of Jupiter and the gravity of the sun uh, interact, they share an orbit with Jupiter, um, but they're not, you know, they're not in the same spot as Jupiter, but they're orbiting the sun at the same distance as Jupiter. And what Katie's got here, what you're seeing, those two giant patches of yellow out in Jupiter's orbit, those are Jupiter's Trojan asteroids. You can see it has a very large collection of them. And there are two of them. One of them is 60 degrees in the orbit in front of Jupiter. Uh, and that group is actually named for members of the Greek army from the story of the Iliad. They call them Trojan asteroids because they are named for characters from the story of the Trojan War. And the one that is leading Jupiter in its orbit is named for characters from the Greek army. There is another cloud of Trojan asteroids 60 degrees behind Jupiter in its orbit, and those are named for members of the Trojan army. So those are the Trojan asteroids. And these asteroids are really leftovers from the formation of the solar system, and that's why they interest us so much. You know, we're still trying to learn as much as we can about the beginnings and the origins of the solar system. So the Lucy team, the team behind this spacecraft, calls these Trojan asteroids fossils of planetary formation. And that's actually how the Lucy spacecraft got its name. It's named for a fossil. You may have heard of it. It's an early hominid fossil, and its name is Lucy, or it was nicknamed Lucy after the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. So it is a, an asteroid mission named after uh, a hominid fossil named after a Beatles song. So it's very cross-disciplinary, <laughs> this mission. So that is why, that is what the Trojans are. And like I said, they're fragments left over from the beginning of the solar system. So we really wanna know more about them. How are we going to explore them. Lucy is due to launch this October. October 16th is its launch date aboard an Atlas V rocket. And it's going to follow a very weird looping trajectory uh, out to Jupiter and the Trojans. So you can see here in this still image, it's a little hard to make out what exactly is going on, uh, how exactly things are getting where they're supposed to be. So it's a little bit easier to see if you just sort of watch it play out in motion. So after launch, Lucy is going to spend three years looping through the inner solar system. It's actually going to fly by Earth twice. And what it's doing there is getting the momentum that it needs to head to the outer solar system. The main belt asteroid it's going to fly past is called uh, Donald Johansson, who is the name of the guy who discovered the Lucy hominid fossil. And then it heads out to the Greek camp of Trojan asteroids. So you saw it loop through there. And 
it is actually going to loop back to Earth to get momentum to head back out to the Trojan camp of asteroids. So let's just go ahead and watch that again. And um, Donald Johansson is the name of the main belt asteroid. A lot of main belt asteroids are named for people. And in this case, it is named for the person who discovered the Lucy hominid fossil. I looked it up, it did get that name after it was chosen as a target for the Lucy spacecraft, at which point it's going to then visit four asteroids in the Greek camp. Uh, and I'm going to slaughter these names. I apologize to any classics majors out there. Eur Euripides, Polymely, Lu Lucas, and Oris before swinging back out to hit the pair, the binary asteroid out in the Trojan camp, uh, Patroclus and Menetius. That one I did look up, so I'm hoping I said that one correctly. And um, you might notice, any fans of the Iliad might notice that I said uh, the Greek camp and the Trojan camp, that Patroclus and Menetius are in the Trojan camp, but those are the names of Greek characters. Uh, that's because very early on when they started discovering these asteroids, the naming convention hadn't fully settled in yet. And as a result, each camp has a spy from the other camp in it. So there is uh, Hector as Prince of Troy. There is an, a Trojan asteroid called Hector in the Greek camp. And uh, Patroclus, of course, and his friend Menetius, they were Greeks and they are in the Trojan camp. So ironically, when Lucy swings back out uh, to the Trojan asteroids to visit the Trojan camp, it's actually going to visit the Greek spy in the Trojan camp. And this is Patroclus and Menetius. They are a binary asteroid, which means they orbit each other as well as orbiting the sun. So the 2033, and that's by 2033, it's supposed to fly by uh, Patroclus and Menetius. Uh, so it's a 12 year mission and the flyby in 2033 is supposed to be the end of the Lucy mission. Uh, however, it's going to stay in that long looping orbit coming in towards earth and then flying back out to the area of Jupiter's Trojans. It's gonna stay in that orbit for a very, 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 very long time. It's going to be a ridiculously stable orbit. And that means that the mission could get extended. The mission would be in a very good position, depending on the health of the spacecraft, to get extended past its 2033 end of mission. So it is possible that although Lucy is already, you know, slated to visit a ridiculous number of asteroids, eight in total, that it could actually visit more. And what's more, uh, it's actually, this very stable orbit means it's going to keep looping around Earth for the next several hundred thousand years, possibly millions of years if it's left alone. So this spacecraft is gonna be there for a very long time. And that means that we decided it would be a good idea to put a message on Lucy. So Lucy carries a plaque. Now we've put other plaques on spacecraft before. It's not a, a new thing. The Pioneer spacecraft both carry uh, a plaque. The Voyager spacecrafts carry plaques. But the difference there is that they carry plaques because they were sent out, out of the solar system, out into space. They're never coming back. If anybody ever happened across those, well, it might be future humans or it might be somebody else. That was the idea behind those plaques. Lucy is staying in the solar system. Like it's just gonna be a very, very uh, stable, long-lived orbit through the solar system, but it's not getting very far from Earth at any point. So this plaque isn't for any you know, aliens out there who might one day pick this spacecraft up. It's to our descendants. It's for future humans to find and read. And what we have is a map of the planets uh, as they were on the day of Lucy's launch, which again is going to be in October. So that's why it says October, 2021. And then a whole series of quotes from uh, various people. I will note all four beetles are represented on this plaque with a quote uh, going back to their 
influence over the name of the Lucy hominid fossil, which was the name of the namesake of the spacecraft, as well as several others. If you would like to read these quotes, um, you can just Google the Lucy plaque. You will be able to find all of these quotes uh, and where they came from. So this is a message to our future human descendants. So that is Lucy launching in October 2021. However, it is not the only asteroid mission due to launch this fall. Following Lucy will be DART. And DART is a very different mission. This stands for the Double Asteroid Redirection Test Mission. And because DART is not heading out to the asteroids to study them, it's heading out to test whether or not we can actually move an asteroid. And the reason we would want to do that is let's say in someday in the future, we realize there's an asteroid heading for Earth that is big enough to be a problem. This is a thing we don't want to hit Earth. We want to have a way to stop it from hitting Earth. And what DART is going to do is test one of those options, one of the ways we could potentially move an asteroid so that it avoids striking the Earth. Uh, so it consists of primarily of this spacecraft that you're looking at here. This is an artist rendition. It will carry a small CubeSat, a little tiny um, sort of spacecraft that it's actually going to let go of before it uh, commences its primary mission because it needs the CubeSat to record images from the mission to send back to Earth because Spoiler alert, DART itself is not gonna survive this mission. It's a very, very low cost mission because all it has to do is smack itself really hard into an asteroid to see if that impact changes the asteroid a little. DART is basically, it's an impactor mission. We're gonna smack an asteroid really hard and see what happens. So the launch window for this one, I said it was gonna be following uh, Lucy and the launch window for this one opens on the day before Thanksgiving. So it opens on November 24th of this year. November 24th, 2021 is when DART can start, is the window for uh, DART's launch. It is going to launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. So after its launch, it's going to spend about a year flying out to an asteroid called Didymos. And Didymos is in uh, an area of asteroids where you might not normally think of asteroids. We often think of asteroids as being in the main belt. Uh, that is not where Didymos is. Didymos is in much closer to uh, Earth. It's not, it's actually an asteroid whose orbit occasionally brings it in towards Earth. Um, but we don't have to worry about this asteroid. This asteroid is never going to strike the Earth that we can tell. And Didymos itself is pretty big. If it ever did hit Earth, it would be a very bad day. Um, but like I said, we're not really worried about Didymos hitting Earth. It's about half a mile across. And to give you an idea, the, uh, at the dinosaur killer impact, that was about a six mile across. So this thing is much smaller than that, but it is big enough that it would be a very bad day for Earth if uh, Didymos something or something the size of Didymos ever hit Earth. The thing is, half a mile across, that's not really a size that we're worried about necessarily. There's not a lot of rocks that size whizzing around on orbits that would cross the Earth's. So this isn't our primary concern, and DART is not designed to move something of Didymos' mass. So Didymos isn't the target. Remember, this mission is the double asteroid redirection test, because Didymos is a double asteroid. It is a binary. It has a moonlet named Dimorphos, which you can see in this model here. I will note that when this mission was originally chosen, Dimorphos did not have a proper name uh, and astronomers called it Diddy Moon. And I think we really missed an opportunity by not just officially naming it Diddy Moon, but it is not officially named Diddy Moon, it's called uh, Dimorphos. And this one is about 525 feet across. Now this is a size that is far more likely to cross paths with the Earth. So here are some size comparisons. You can see Didymos is quite large. 
um, compared to dimorphos, which is more the size of the pyramids. And this is a far more likely size of thing that would impact the earth. And so it's much, it's one that we're far, and we're also far more likely to be able to move something of this mass. So this thing is really much more the size that interests us. Because an impact from on earth from something the size of dimorphos, it would not be an extinction level event. This would not be like the dinosaur killer event, but this would be a pretty bad day for earth. Depending on the specifics, uh, an impact like that could release more energy than the 1883 eruption of Krakatoa. And the, that eruption affected weather all over the world. It was, a, it was an event that had effects on the entire world. If you were to release all that energy, more energy than that instantaneously, that would affect the whole world. It would affect the region immediately around the impact very strongly. This would be not a, uh, a world killer as we call them, but this could be a big problem for the region around it. So you would not want to be anywhere near that impact. So this is an impact we'd like to, you know, the, of the kind we'd like to try and uh, avoid. Again, dimorphos itself is not a threat, um, but it is what we're going to use as our test bed. So in October, of 2022, so a year after launch, give or take a month, uh, DART is going to hit Dimorphos at a speed of about 15,000 miles per hour. Now it's not doing this to try and smash the asteroid or break it up or anything dramatic like that. All it's trying to do with this impact is change its speed by about half a millimeter per second. A half a millimeter per second doesn't sound like a lot, and it's not. It doesn't have to be. The idea is that if an asteroid this size were heading towards the Earth, and we hit it early enough with something like DART, 0.5 millimeters per second over a long enough time is enough to shift it in onto a new path a path that could cause it to miss the Earth, which is really what we're going for. So there's that little CubeSat. CubeSat will observe the impact. And then hopefully, the impact of DART is actually going to push Dimorphos into a new orbit around Didymos. And to test and see if that is in fact the case, we're going to send a second spacecraft. In 2024, the European Space Agency is going to launch a spacecraft called Hera aboard an Ariane 5 rocket. And it's going to make detailed observations of Dimorphos's orbit to see if it has changed as predicted. And if it has, if DART manages to do this, it means we're going to ha officially have a trick in our back pocket if we ever spot an asteroid that we think is going to be a problem. So this is the kind of thing, uh, we've never done something like this. We've never tested a planetary protection theory this way before. There's been lots of ideas about what we could do to uh, save the Earth if a problematic asteroid was on its way. This is the first time we're actually going to test something. So it's really, really cool. It's also kind of weird that NASA is launching something that has really nothing to do with studying the asteroid. We're just going to smack into it really, really hard. So that is coming up. That launch is coming up in November, or at least the launch window opens in November. It's um, it's almost a it's almost a three month launch window. Uh, so it could launch as early as November. It could launch as late as February. It will still get there in October of 2022, and we will smack into an asteroid really hard, which is kind of awesome. So those are the 2021 asteroid missions, but it's not the end of the upcoming missions to asteroids that NASA is preparing for. Uh, there is another one on the docket within the next year called Psyche. Now this one is a little confusing because both the spacecraft and the target asteroid have the same name. The spacecraft is named Psyche and so is the asteroid it's heading for. I don't know why they did that. That seems awfully confusing to me. But yes, both the asteroid and the mission are named Psyche. So Psyche, the spacecraft, is going to launch in just, uh, just about a year 
Uh, it's going to launch in October, in October, August of 2022, so next summer, and it's going to launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. So that's the really big heavy lift rocket. This one is um, going to fly past Mars. It's going to do a little flyby of Mars on its way to reach Psyche the asteroid, which is a main belt asteroid. So Katie now has the main belt asteroids highlighted. Uh, it's going to reach the asteroid in 2026. So it's going to be a four-year trip to make it to this asteroid. So that is Psyche the spacecraft. Now, why are we interested in Psyche the asteroid? We were interested in the Trojan asteroids because they're fragments from the beginning of the solar system. We were interested in Didymos and Dimorphos because they're a nice, easy target for us to try and test this redirection method. Psyche we're interested in because it's different from pretty much every other asteroid we've been able to study. Most asteroids are mostly rock. Um, they can also have large amounts of ice and they can have large amounts of metal mixed into them as well. Uh, Psyche is so weird because it's made almost entirely out of metal. This is a metal asteroid. Uh, it's called a Class M asteroid, which uh, tickles me as a Star Trek fan. Class M planets in Star Trek are the ones that are nice places to hang out. Class M asteroids are not nice, nice places to hang out. It means they are metallic. They are M for metallic. And Psyche is the protochild for the metallic asteroids. It is so massive because it's really, really big and it's pretty much all made out of metal that it all by itself accounts for 1% of the mass of the asteroid belt. Now keep that in mind, the asteroid belt is millions of rocks. And of all those rocks, 1%, a whole percentage of their mass is represented by this one object, Psyche, the asteroid. So why is that? What is going on? Why is Psyche so different? There's a theory that this might be the metallic core of a planet that started to form in the early solar system and never got to finish. So if you think about the rocky worlds like Earth, they actually have metallic cores. Uh, Earth has a core made of nickel and iron. Uh, the inner core is uh, pretty solid, the outer core is molten. So, and that is true, we think of all of the uh, rocky worlds that they have metallic inner cores. It's probably true of whatever is at the center of the gas giants as well, uh, that the innermost part is a metallic core. And so that could be what Psyche is. It could be a planet that started to form and then didn't. If it had finished forming, uh, scientists estimate that this planet could have been as large as the planet Mars. That's how big this core would have gotten. This is a, an artist rendition, by the way, this is not a photo of Psyche, just so you're aware. Um, but that is very interesting if this is in fact a planet core, because planet cores are something that we want to know more about, but it's something that we usually have to study very indirectly. For instance, when we want to learn more about Earth's core, we, you, we basically study earthquakes. We study the seismic waves from earthquakes and how um, different stations around the globe detect earthquake waves at different times because they have to move through the center of the Earth to get to the other side. So that helps us figure out what the center of the Earth looks like. When we're talking about other planets, we fly spacecraft in orbit around them and look for little tiny changes in their gravity to try and figure out what's going on under the surface. Um, but that's all very, very indirect. You can't actually go down and see what the core of these worlds look like. Except maybe we can at Psyche. Maybe that's what Psyche is. It is an exposed planet core, which would give us the chance to just go up and directly study something that we've never been able to see for ourselves before, that we've always had to use very indirect methods to study. And that is pretty cool. This could be, you know, the planet that, that wasn't. And that's an exciting uh, development. So Psyche, again, uh, is going to be heading there. Oh, and yes, and I forgot to mention, oh, how did I forget to mention this? This is one of the coolest facts about Psyche for me. I learned a new word. 
learning about psyche because we think that a unique kind of volcanism has taken place on this world, pharaoh volcanism. So, you, you know, when we're talking about regular volcanism, we're usually talking about molten rock being erupted. We also have talked about cryovolcanism. That's something we see a lot in the outer solar system. Cryovolcanoes are um, ice volcanoes that erupt ice and water. Ferrovulcanism means erupting molten metal. And it is a term I did not know until I started learning about psyche. So that's my favorite new word, ferrovulcanism eruptions of molten metal that we think happened on this world, which could be the exposed core of a failed planet. And if that's not an epic sentence to end our discussion of asteroid missions on, I don't know what would be. So thank you everybody for joining us as we talk about um, upcoming asteroid missions. We're going to be back live again next week to continue talking about upcoming missions. Uh, Katie, if you would like to say your farewells. Goodbye, everyone. So once again, everybody, we hope to see you back next week um, as we talk about uh, upcoming uh, human crewed missions that we are excited about. Katie's gonna be talking to us about Project Artemis and the Lunar Gateway, which is I'm very excited about and um, we hope to see you back there and we hope to see you uh, in future presentations as well. But for now, I hope everybody keeps being fascinated about space because it's pretty much the coolest thing out there. So enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you next week. <laughs>